Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah. Welcome. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Let's start. We could do names. Let's start over here. Bill Adams. Judy Durkin. Len Burroughs. Dan Diskin. Brenda Burkhall. Rich Copeland. Right. This is where I, I, the sarcastic part of me wants to throw in something, and you're all here because of, and then say something completely inappropriate, but I won't do that. <laughs> You're here because you didn't stop, right? At the end of the day, your testing last night, in, in the most simple of terms, occurred because you didn't stop training. Why? Because it's fun. We love it. Is that the only reason? No, but it's a big part of it. Okay. For me, I think for the camaraderie that we have and the group that we have and, and the skill set that we've built over the years of, uh, of beginning this process. Once, once you get bitten, you can't stop. <laughs> it's really it becomes part of your life to build on what, what some of the earlier folks said. It becomes a lifestyle. We enjoy it. We enjoy it. It's, it's, it is. It's a lifestyle. Um, mind, body, spirit, it, it takes over your whole life. I think you learn how to encompass what you learn on the floor to integrate that into your off the floor life with your family, with your work, with friends. And I know me personally, the, this dojo is called the, the, um, the symbol on the hill. I always feel like whenever I come to the dojo, I'm coming home, coming home with all the sisters and brothers of Rachel Rue, and it feels like about coming home. It's about something liberating and keepsake. That's where I feel about you know coming to work. So it's work out. It's not so much a you know uh, an endeavor of torture or uh, a hardship. It's actually uh, what's that? Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, <laughs> over the decades, it's grown from. The hardness, maybe more to the mildness and softness, encompassing. So I feel that I'm connecting uh, when I when I come to the dojo with the, and I feel all the members, extended members of, of the Rachi Ru family is our family. In fact, this Rachi Khan, with all the other schools coming and uh, spouse, I think it's a it's a martial art convention. That's where I feel about it. That we could interchange you know, uh, what we've been learning for all these decades. I agree with what everyone said, and I also still have so much more to learn. Mm -hmm. It is a deep style, so many details, and I feel I can keep improving, hopefully. So that's why you just, you want more? I do, and I enjoy the camaraderie, and. I know that I need to keep moving so I don't become the Tin Man. <laughs> yeah, pretty much what everybody else said. To me, it's a way of life. Uh, and I realized that after just maybe one or two years of, of training. And uh, when I got my first black belt, it was, I don't want to stop this. I just want to keep going. And I've remained uh, very consistent with it over almost 30 years. Um, it's uh, you're always learning something and you, and you can refine uh, your own style within with, within Weichi Ru it allows you to um, interpret a lot of different things a lot of different techniques applications you never stop learning never and you're always looking for for uh, that opportunity of learning off of somebody else or just playing around with concepts uh, doesn't make sense to stop you said a little bit judy but maybe you'd say a little more <laughs> i will share with me no um I, I think i just go because i enjoy it so much there are two things specifically and one is the workout the workout um it's exhilarating the, the, the physical component? yeah yep yep the the punching and hitting and kicking and 
and receiving that too and being able to take it. It really is a, a high, it's exhilarating. But the, uh, the second thing is um, the people. I, I have the best time. I think we all do. Yeah, we we yes. have a lot of laughs yeah. in class. It's not really strict or, uh, you know, it's, it's not formal at all. It is, I'm sorry, you know, you bow, <laughs> but everybody has a good time. Everybody has a great time. There's a lot of laughter. And someone said it earlier in the other panel, and sometimes, like, oh, I'm so comfortable at home, and it's a beautiful day, I'll go out in the garden, but I know I have to go to class because I'll feel better, and it's good for me physically and mentally. Those are often the best workouts, too, when you, when you, uh, yeah, when you don't exactly. feel like going in. And, and that's you when come you should go. Charged, yeah, and ready to go. Yeah. yeah. And then I leave, and I'm like, ah. We all shake hands with each other after class, and I'm like, that was the best class. They're all the best class, it seems like. <laughs> but it's just, it's a lot of fun. You know, we have a phrase called Mushin, open mind, no mindedness. And like getting ready for this convention, or even when I come to class, I do or have a ritual. I wash my gi, I eye my gi, and I'm preparing to come to the workout that starts either the night before or during that early morning. Because I, so I live in Berkshire, so it's a three and a half, three hour drive minimum. So, but it's a preparation. You know, it's a preparation to bring you in sync only before you get there. And so you come with, a, come with an open mind that we know what to expect, but I try not to think that it's too much jaded or prescript, prescribed that I'm allowing to see, because that allows me to see, even in the most simple move and this simple interaction, something new. So it's always discovery uh, with this martial arts, with this hero. George Matson mentioned many, many years ago that our style is like a pawn, not very large, but very deep. And you can forever reach in and find out a treasure. Whereas some styles have very complex, multi-move, techniques, but maybe very shallow. So the richness, even after 50 years, is I'm still pulling out treasures. I'm still seeing things that I'm newly being, newly discovered. And that's what makes it so appreciable. I also think it's the fact that you share those treasures. Because yeah. you learn them and then you share them with me. You did that just the other day. We were talking in class about balance and getting stronger and so forth, and you were giving me your treasures. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Jerkin says it all the time, the rising tide raises all boats. As one improves, everybody else improves. We're not, you know, we're, I, w I wouldn't say we're competitive, we're challenging to each other. You know, we pair off, you know, if you want to come and you want to be spiritual and, 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 and soft and work on body conditioning and, and that side, in the Potoka Kai, you can find that. If you want to come and be challenged by a partner who wants to kind of push you a little bit, you can come to the Botoko Kai, any one of our schools, and find that. If you want to spot, you want to fight, you want to really push it, we've got people that do that too. So this association has really something for everybody. You, you fit in. And, and, and there's no ego. There's no um, competition at a negative level. It really is that rising tide brings us all up. And that's what keeps us coming through, really, because we have this family group. Um, and it's, it's, it's a unique experience. That's why I say once you get bit, once you come and you experience it for yourself, you just can't walk away. You really can't. I think it's a maturity level. You know, 50 years at Sensei's have this dojo. 50 years, a lot of tradition, a lot of firsts, a lot of important things. But I think, it's a, I think it's a maturity level. You know, we're moving into the adult ward of the Karate Kai. Not so much young lions, you know, trying to discover and trying to find ourselves. We're sort of at that level where we understand a heck of a lot more. And now we're taking what we learn on the floor into, like I said, into our daily lives. And it's very meaningful. This is, this martial art is principle based. So it's not like the flavor of the month, the flavor of the week, the flavor of the year. There's so much richness that you could forever learn. And that's, that's the beauty of, of what we're doing. 
trying to get that wall too. I always think of this, we have a corridor in the, in the Atkinson Dojo that separates the main dojo from when you walk in. You enter from the back in the student's entrance and there's a wall there. And you go in to change and come out and once you bow in and you enter and you kneel down, you kind of empty a cup and you prepare for the class, whether you brought some things you want to work on on your own and, and that'll integrate into the class. Um, that wall that separates that corridor from the dojo, I'm trying to make that wall disappear. <laughs> I get a sense in there where I, I kind of flush everything. And not all the craziness that's going on in the world, I flush it. And I want to be that person inside and outside the dojo, have that same feeling about my life and, and about how I interact with people. So that's kind of the challenge, the more you stay with it. Um, that's cool for me. Yeah. I know, I think you do that. I try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a ritual, maybe back in the 80s, when, you know, we were what, so 80s, we were like 17, 18 years into, you know, from the school, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the bow became very important. So even though there was a lot of noise and activities in your life and maybe aspiration, just getting to the dojo, as soon as you were able to bow, you were learning how to separate your outside life away from the Absolutely. practice. And you can go all in in the practice. And it was so cathartic, because when you left, as you were saying, you feel so good. So maybe the things you were disappointed in, flat tire, the wife yelling at you, or kids being up, whatever, it didn't seem to be that so disappointing, because you felt so refreshed. And now, you know, saying that maybe we can move that wall, that we, we, we can bow here, we can bow at home, because we we're, martial artists all the time, not just when we're in the dojo. Absolutely. I thought we were in a good role. I was, I was going to pick up the ball and run with it. You're making, you're making me work. Yeah, Buzz, Buzz always says that at the end of class, too. Take your karate out there with you. Yeah. Someone told me years ago, it's a treasure. Keep it in your pocket. You know, when I first started studying, I, I didn't tell anybody. And I did it for a number of years. There wasn't social media time. I mean, now I'm much more open and I'm doing it so long in the social media. But when I first started studying, I didn't tell anybody. I, people I worked with didn't know, friends didn't know, my family were the only ones that knew. Because I didn't think people would really understand. You always get those questions like, oh, have you been in a fight? Did you hit somebody? You know, they don't, they don't understand the whole, the whole mind, body, spirit. That, and maybe when I, it was early on, I didn't understand that. But the challenge that, that you're going through inside the dojo, until you went to that space and you, you, you work through it, you don't really understand. So I kept it so quiet. Um, and and it, I was told, it's a treasure. Keep it in your pocket. Take it everywhere you go. So that's an expression I like to use. So on that, I've been studying 53 years. And I have never, it's almost close. I, I've been in arguments. I've been in karate fights, <laughs> tournaments, <laughs> but I, um, and I probably was pretty aggressive in some of the tournaments, <laughs> but I, I don't think that I've ever had to use my karate out, at all outside of, you know, training, you know, I think, well, that's a legacy in itself. Now, you mean people physical, thought, physical, people yeah, thought physical. I was crazy because some of the workouts I was doing, hitting oh, poles, yeah. hitting things, they, <laughs> The, I was a crazy guy. But but. That, some of that stuff might be worse than getting into a fight. Of course. Of course. There you go. There you go. Exactly. But I, when you think about it, that's a, that's a really good thing that I, you don't feel that you... I've actually separated people, right? You know, physically and stuff like that. But I, I, I really can't remember beating anybody up. <laughs> you know, I mean, in that negative way, right? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So that's, that's something. I, you know, when you think about 50 odd years, uh, yeah. you never had yeah. to apply. I, I've used it to, to have people break up like that. You know, and if you had known up. going in, you know, before day one, you're never going to have to quote use this mm -hmm. to protect yourself on the street. Would you have done it? Probably not, because they, they, and, and actually, yeah. I, I'd like yeah. all of you to yeah. answer that. Probably, question. probably not, because I, I wanted to uh, be able to defend myself. Sure. I took it for that. And I also, the journey for me, it's been internal. It's to get to a point where I know I don't necessarily have to fight. I have a lot more options than to fight. I'm not saying that if somebody attacked me that I wouldn't defend myself. That's different. But I, I could leave a, a, 
you know, environment where it's just not healthy, I'm not interested in winning an unhealthy environment. I can lead and I have, you know, because the marshalling is about marshalling how I respond, not you, how I respond to the situation. And that's the real marshalling, I think, of being a master in the martial arts. It's not what other people are doing, it's how we are going to respond to the situation. It does not mean that I wouldn't defend my family or myself, but there are a lot more options sometimes than we're thinking if we want to narrow it down, you know. So the observation, the awareness, walking into a room, understanding where you are Absolutely. and knowing where the exits are, Absolutely. watching people, the arguing, maybe you don't sit close to that argument, you sit the other way, all these little things that we learned over years, uh, are real training, you know, that's the real essence of it. Not walking blindly into a, 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 a alley, understanding that, you know, there are people out there that may want to harm you and stuff like that, being aware. So the awareness after all these years of training, it's really important. Now I'll go outside the, um, tonight, outside the hotel and get clubbed over the head and come back <laughs> here and tell you something different. <laughs> Hopefully not. I'm, I'm really hoping not. Would you have started training if you, if you knew you weren't going to? And, and, and maybe I'm making the assumption. I think I saw everyone nodding along. I, I, we, we don't necessarily need to get into everyone's real world application of their training, but I, I'm not getting the sense from any of you that you, you've had a, a secret life as a street fighter. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely would have. Um, yeah. I, I, as a kid, I always wanted to, to, uh, to get involved in martial arts. Didn't know anything about it, but I, something, I just wanted to do it. And it wasn't more, you know, to, to, for self-defense. You know, as I got older, I um, got into middle school and high school, and it was like, yeah, the, you, you want to be able to defend yourself. Because, you know, you get into those weird ages where, you know, people try to pick on you or bully you and do this and that. But for me, it was something a little bit different. I don't know if it was spiritual or, or, or what, but... Um, I actually didn't get started in martial arts till I was, I was somewhere around 32, 33. Um, and it, it taught me how to protect myself. Not that I needed it, meaning that, you know, I always would avoid any kind of uh, altercations that somebody may want to try to get involved in. You know, one of the, as they say, in, with self-defense, um, the best form of self-defense is to stay out of trouble, you know, get away from trouble. But by learning through karate that if I needed to, I could. I don't want to. I take the, and, and use the karate more for my own uh, personal development and spiritual development philosophical, um, obviously physical, but I don't need to um, be afraid of walking into uh, an area that may be a little hostile uh, or, you know, walking down the street at night, you know, you, you build some confidence and, and you know what to look for and you know how to deal with it. To, to the other four, because I, I want to be respectful of time, we're going to start to wrap here, but would, would these two descriptions seem appropriate for, for each of you? And, 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 you know, I, I grew up in the city. I grew up in, in Boston and Dorchester, you know, busing, and, and didn't have a car until I was almost married. So I was on the T all the time. Um, it, it was kind of a tough time in the city. I, I, I wanted to learn how to fight. I wanted to learn how to defend myself. I used to ride the red line. So you um, wouldn't, you wouldn't have. I would not. I would training. not have started. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, yeah. It was it was a tough time. So I I, I was very conscious, you know, as and as I've gotten older and more mature, I'm, I, they call me Ocean. My family. I'm very situational awareness. I know where the exits are. I know the people in the room when someone shifts. I watch um, when I'm on public transportation, getting on a plane. Anywhere I go, I'm very situational. And that's from growing up in the city. I think. When you ride the train, it's the person left-handed. Where's the watch? How do they? What's their gait? How do they move? Um, who's getting on and off? So I really wanted to learn how to protect myself. So that was my core thing. And I love, I love, I can't stress anymore. And I think two to agree, the physicality of this. Mm -hmm. It just, I mean, yeah, I love it. 
Um, but then as you mature and you get to the levels that we're getting and the years of experience, you, you balance it all up, looking for those other things to, for, you know, um, for, for the other sides to soften you, right? But I would never have started if, if it was not a physical, and, and I would say uh, my license plate's Budo, if it wasn't a combative type of a system. Um, but I live by the code of Budo, I think, too. So there's that opposite side of it. So for me. That was not the case for me. My son started after his best friend started, and they had researched all the schools and found the best one. So I've been at Bus Durkin's since my son was eight. He's 39. Um, and I was so impressed, all the work on poise and confidence, self-control. And I wanted his older sister to go. She was extremely shy. And actually, so was I. And I am more comfortable with people and with myself. I think it helped open her up, helped control him. So I have never been in a fight outside the dojo. And the increased awareness hopefully will maintain that forever. But <laughs> it's awesome. Um, but to answer your question, I find it hard to answer because we don't know. So how would I? But if it de absolutely, if I knew how much fun it was, how good I felt, that would definitely start. So we're, we're going to wrap, and we'll go down the line. I've got a question I, I'd love to hear it. You know, maybe it's a little cliche, because I, I think I know the answer, but I'd like you to go just, just a hair beyond that. Are you more excited about your training now than you were, say, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago? Less so? The same? I think it's different. It's not so much mm. more. You're always excited about your training, regardless of what stage you're at. You know, when I first started, yeah, it was like, wow, this is great. I'm going to keep doing it. And as you years pass and you, you're consistent with your training, the, the excitement kind of changes a little bit. Um, when you first started, you were learning a lot of things. You have the technique, you're learning um, you know, conditioning, you're learning the basics. And, you know, with a lot of people, when they, unfortunately, when they hit black belt, all of a sudden they disappear. It's, it's, it's like their goal was to be a black belt. Well, the black belt to me is that you've just learned the basics. Now you're a black belt. Now you make it your own. And you, you learn, again, the, the, the interpretation take the interpretation of the style and you learn the different ways in which you can use it, not just on the, on the physical part of it, but also um, mentally, emotionally. Uh, and it, you, you get excited about that part, you know, and it, it makes it, um, as I said earlier, you're, you're always, always learning. You get to play with different things and, 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 and mold yourself into it. And, into the style, <clears throat> put your own interpretation into it. You know, people say this this is how you do this kata, okay, yes. But you have your own way of doing it. Any one of us will, will perform the same kata and have a different blend of it. That's the exciting part is being able to to take those movements uh, and learn from them and how you could use them. So it's the excitement is is the same, but it's different. Not an answer I expected, but I'm, but I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> what more is there to say? <laughs> it is still very exciting, um, but somewhat different. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. Yeah, no, very exciting. You know, it, it's part of my my routine. It's built into my schedule. My schedule doesn't change. If it's karate, it's karate. I go to the classes. I think I've evolved and developed again that that taking that wall down. I think I've I've personally received the benefits of, of my family, my family, my relationships with folks outside the dojo is much better. I'm, I'm a calmer person. I tend to be a very emotional person. So I think um, I train because I still like the physicality of it, and I'm driven by that. I train because of the camaraderie of Kai. I mean, it, it's like nowhere else. I train because of uh, 
benefits my family and I have together. Um, and I want to be just be the best I can be in the end. You know, whatever that turns out to be, it's the best I'm going to be. So that's what keeps me going. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm at that. I just got tent down, so you're top of the mountain, sort of thing. But I have I retired seven years ago from uh, professional from, from work, and in the last seven years, I've been driven to provide um, uh, volunteerism. I, I, I'm embodied with giving back. I, I think that uh, I'm so, I've been so blessed, uh, and on my journey through my work life, which was over 50 something years. The martial arts and karate and Rachiru was a blessing. It was some really tough times where I didn't have to fight anybody, but I had to deal with people I work with and maybe I, I take their image outside with me and beat them up in the imaginary line, you know what I mean? So, and then be able to sit with them and feel, you know, at ease sort of thing. So it, it, there were some impactful times when it really meant a lot outside of dojo through my working life and family life. So. It's been a blasting, and now here I sit later, you know, this is something 50 some years ago, I feel so <laughs> blessed in so many ways. So I, I, I believe in community building. I believe that what we have uh, and, and acquired, that we want to give to others so that the legacy moves on. It's not about going to the grave and keeping all your, your treasures, it's giving it all away. You know, the, my, in, a, in a way, I believe in that, I believe that we came into the world, and let's get philosophized, with very little. And if I could have my way, I wouldn't, I can't talk to my wife. I, I would try to give everything away before, I, if I know that I was going to pass, you know, that sort of thing. But I really think that even though at, at, at this time, that the desire is almost e even more impactful than it was 50 something years ago to give it, to share it, to make it a lasting uh, entity, not for the ego part, but for gratitude. And, and, and respect. That's that's where I sit here. That's where I feel. Yeah, definitely more exciting. Um, and it, it changes, like some of you have already said. It, it's a different type of excitement. And I can, it's the one place. Well, there's a few others, but basically the one place I can go, no matter what time of day I go in, no matter what class is going on, you someone's going to smile at you and say, how, you know, how was your day? And, Everybody is just so kind and everybody is helpful to each other. And so my excitement is still the workout, but it's also sharing it. And as we get older and more advanced, people are looking up to us and to be able to be a role model for younger and less experienced students makes it exciting. It's more exciting for me when I started 49 years ago I had two senseis, Michael and Warren Shaley, and they were second degree black belts, and they were up at the top. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started out as a student, and then I advanced to a sensei. Now I'm a dojo owner, and I want to be the best that I can be. And I have great examples like Sensei Durkin of how good I can be. Not only that, but I would like to pass it on. Um, a sensei is one who has gone before and is passing it on to the, uh, the next generation. My uh, son and my daughter-in-law study at my karate school, and now my five-year-old granddaughter is studying at my karate school, and I'm waiting for the two-year-old to get <laughs> old enough to take over the school. So um, take over it's, the it, is, it, it is more exciting for me. On, on all levels. Well, congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you for Thank you. allowing me this time. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.